You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. And some of you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon Dam coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake. Sissel's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. Janine had watched silent silently as Herschel stomped out of the cafe. The rain continued to pelt the attic window as the sound of Herschel's truck sputtered out of the out of the driveway. In the silence, I watched Sissel's chest rise and fall steadily with every breath. I hope he wakes up soon. Will simply waiting be enough? Sissel was attacked by the remnant. Who knows if this is just a just a simple near drowning experience? Sissel blinked, feeling slightly dazed. This entire day felt like a surreal dream. He wasn't sure if he wanted it to end just yet. The moment he arrived at school, Mrs. Corlice dragged him aside to brag to all the parents about his great performance in class. She was simply being a supportive teacher and was in no way showing any favoritism. Mrs. Corlice emphasized how Sissel will undoubtedly ace the, culmin the culinary competition with flying colors. When a nearby mom asked Mrs. Corlice if she was playing favorites, she promptly told her to shut up. Sissel may not be the best in academics, but his work ethic and sheer determination is something all students should strive for. Sissel smiled awkwardly and tried to hide himself behind Mrs. Corlice. Getting suddenly dragged into the, into the spotlight felt uncomfortable, but the way Mrs. Corlice spoke about him made Sissel's heart twinge with a bit of pride. Well, if this, if this kid's really that impressive, where's his contest entry? There was a nasty edge to the woman's voice. Sissel flinched and glanced around aimlessly. Oh, oh shit! What's the matter? I, uh, I think I might have left it at home. Impressive indeed. I thought this kid was supposed to be smart. A wave of panic washed over Sissel as he made a dash towards the door. I think I can run back and get it before the contest starts. He was suddenly yanked back by Adrian's arm with a laugh. You can probably just give your mom and uncle a call instead of running all the way back home. Aren't they on their way to the school anyway? It's visitor's day after all. Oh, right. It really occurred to him that he could call home now and expect someone to pick up or have a home to begin with. Sissel fumbled with his phone and dialed the unfamiliar mom number in his contacts. His confusion only rose when he heard Cecilia's ringtone go off behind him. Mom? Sissel turned around to see Cecilia and Herschel uh, putting a familiar cart through the school doors with matching grins on their faces. Yo! Mom? H Herschel, you guys came! Sissel's eyes fell on the large metal cart they were pushing. You guys brought my sculpture too? You worked for weeks on your entry, hun. I could just watch you leave it at home and fail. Cecil bolted up to her with relief. There was a moment of hesitation, then he leapt into her arms in a big warm hug. Well, thanks for saving my ass, Mom. That's my job, isn't it? It'd be nice if you required less ass saving in the future, though. They all peeked inside of the cart. Inside was Cecil's glorious chocolate sculpture of the Capitol building, standing in perfect condition and carved with a painstaking level of detail. The woman from earlier scoffed. That's it? My son's entry is much more befitting a victory than this simple hunk of chocolate. Cecilia squinted at the woman, her smile curling into a grimace. Cecil watched her nervously as she stood up as she stood up straight and stared right into the other parent's eyes. My son worked night and day to make sure his entry was in tip-top shape. What kind of store-bought crap did your kid bring this time, Helen? I don't know what you're talking about! At least my child got a proper upbringing with a real father, unlike your son's whore of a parent. Hey now! Sissel felt his mother place a hand on his shoulder. Oh god. Well, my kid can beat up your kid. And probably you too. Ain't that right, son? What? Uh, I, I guess? Hell, I could beat you up. Ready to put your money where your mouth is, lady? I'll scramble you like an egg. Ugh. Uh, sis, uh, stop picking fights with the other parents. You're gonna get yourself kicked off campus again. Yeah, but I'll kick her ass first. Alrighty, let's take a moment to chill and... At this point, Mrs. Corlice jumped in and quickly escorted the other parents out of the hallway before an actual mom versus mom fistfight broke out. One second, y'all. It is water time. Cecil watched in disbelief as Cecilia flipped the other woman off while she retreated down the hall. Well, before you get arrested for assault, I'm gonna take Cecil's sculpture down to the ballroom for the competition. It'll be another hour before the competition actually starts. Sis. I mean, Cecil. Why don't you show your mother around and show off the work from your other classes until then? Hey, it's fine. I can carry the sculpture myself. Herschel laughed and poked him on the nose. Nah, I've got, I've got this handled, kiddo. Why don't you take it easy for a while? 
Sissel, yet again, was struck by how strange it felt to be taken care of like this. He gratefully waved Herschel goodbye as he watched him push the cart away. Turning back to his mom, Sissel was relieved to see she had calmed down a bit. Just a bit. The nerve of that woman! Can you believe her? Oh, uh, you didn't have to wage war on that other lady like that, Mom. It's just chocolate. I was defending your honor. Her loud declaration drew the eyes of several people in the hall. Sizzle felt his face heat up, but couldn't help smiling. Cecilia ruffled his hair like a puppy before poking him in the chest. Listen, nobody talks down to my son without a sharp word or two. Or a fist. I could, if you could take a few harsh words, you know. I know you can take it, but that doesn't mean I will. You're my kid. I'm glad to be proud of you, aren't I? Oh. Cecil felt his face flush with a mix of embarrassment and pride. Yeah, sh sure. Uh, come on, Mom. Still gotta show you my work from my other classes before the contest starts. Cecilia's proud smile was the most heartwarming sight in the world as she let her son drag her around the school. Lead the way, hon. And here's attempt number 43. Cover your ears if you plan on keeping them. Jenny took a deep breath, aimed Herschel's trumpet inches away from Cecil's face, and blew hard. The room shook as the fear <laughs> of a trumpet violently convulsed through the attic walls and eviscerated my eardrums. I clamped my hands around my ears and glanced at Cecil. He was still sleeping peacefully, blind and deaf to the world around him despite the murderous trumpet and roaring rainstorm outside. Jenny finally dropped the trumpet inside. Damn, no response? We've tried everything we could think of since Herschel left. At this point, I don't think he's ever going to wake up. A sense of dread hung over me as I hovered over Sissel's sleeping body. It doesn't feel normal. You'd think he'd at least react. Do you think that ghost did something to him? Jenny tapped her chin thoughtfully. I can't say I'm too familiar with all this ghostly business. Maybe we should perform an exorcism. I seriously doubt that would work. Hmm? I lifted one of my legs. Was the floor getting wet? Water was seeping unnaturally through a crack in the windowsill, soaking into the attic floor. I jumped back behind, behind Jenny as the puddle of water spread with a mind of its own. Slowly, a familiar figure rose from the water like a cryptic sea creature rising from the depths. Hello again, young one. Oh, whew, it's just you. For a second, I thought it was the remnant. Ah! Jenny suddenly leaped forward and shoved a handful of salt into the wish's face. Some of it stuck to her hair while the rest fell uselessly on the floor. What was that supposed to be? Jenny jumped back behind me with a glare. An exorcism, obviously. With Walmart table salt. I like how she knows it's Walmart table salt. Whoa, calm down. This is a friendly ghost. She just rose out of the water like a knockoff monster from the ring. You can't honestly expect me to be chill with this. It's fine. It's fine. This lady saved me and Sissel from the faceless ghost a few times. We can trust her. Indeed. I intend to help. She turned toward, I turned towards the black lady of the, the black lady of Bradley. She casually dabbed the salt off of her face like a cat. So uh, you're here to make sure Sissel's all right, right? How do we? How do we help him? The wish turned its head towards Sissel, lying peacefully in his sleep. He will not wake up. The remnant has pulled him into a deep sleep, trapped in a dream of Sissel's own making. He will not wake up unless he himself wants to. Jenny eyed Bradley suspiciously and approached her at Sissel's bedside. Must be one hell of a dream. Correct. It is a perfect dream. A perfect world where all his pain and insecurities are at ease. Where all his wishes are true. He's living in a world where his family is alive and well, raising him through a loving childhood he never had in the waking world. All the opportunities he had missed and longed for are his for the taking. Now his regrets are wiped from existence. Second y'all, water time. The purest happiness. Junior and I exchanged confused glances as we tried to process the wish's words. So, to wake Sissel up, he has to want to wake up? What can we do to help? Bradley lifted her thin, skeletal hand and gently placed it on Sissel's forehead. I will need your help. The remnant has grown stronger. I cannot forcibly break through Sissel's dream. However, I can project a strong memory from one of you into Sissel's dream. Bradley paused. A strong memory. A memory that reminds him of what matters in the waking world. And will convince him to voluntarily wake up from his perfect dream. Bradley turned towards us, an expectant glimmer in her eye. Do either of you have the strong memory Sissel needs? The room was quiet for several minutes as I racked my brain for something useful. Chewing on my lip, I thought back to all my times with Sissel. Do I have anything significant enough to wake him up? I, uh, I have a lot of happy memories of Sissel in them. 
Like our camping trip or that time we stayed at the cafe together. Hell, maybe even our kayaking field trip. None of those memories will suffice. Cecil is already as happy as he could possibly be in his dream. I wish his voice was blunt and to the point. I flinched, my composure wavering as I thought hard again. I have plenty of other memories with him, too. Like the times we talked about his ambition to be successful in making Herschel happy. Or his longing to have a family. That is just simple talk. Too weak. Bradley examined me carefully. I could feel the gaze of her sharp eyes, even from underneath her curtain of black hair. You are unlikely to have anything of substance to provide. You've only known Cecil for a little over two weeks. What are you to him? An infatuation? A crush? I don't have to wake him from an ordeal like this. You are irrelevant here. My heart plummeted and I felt very sick to my stomach. Her words were harsh, but the truth of them hurt more than anything else. I could only nod, stone-faced, and took a seat in the back of the room. <sniffs> Jenny glanced at me with a worried expression, but I couldn't meet her eyes. With a sigh, she stepped up towards the wish and offered her hand. I think I might have something. Bradley took her hand, her thin, bony fingers slowly wrapping around Jenny's small hand. The room was quiet as Bradley brushed her fingers across Jenny's palm. Yes, this will do. Now close your eyes and focus on the things you felt in this moment. It will be key to tethering Cecil back to the waking world. Jenny gulped and gave a determined nod. Bradley placed her hand, her other hand on Cecil's forehead. Let us begin. Cecil wasn't sure when the nagging feeling in his chest began, but he tried his best to ignore it. This time he was spending, this time he was spending with his family. He wasn't going to let anything distract him from enjoying it. Cecil smiled and tugged it on his mother's sleeve as he led her through as he led her through Gerani's classrooms. And this is the art room, where I helped Mrs. Corlise with a few of her sculpture classes. I didn't think sculpting would be very useful in this culinary stuff I was doing, but I'm glad I learned it. Cecilia scanned through all the art pieces on the display with a wide smile on her face. Cecil felt his stomach flutter when Cecilia looked impressively at his own sculptures on the display. Oh, excuse me. You've gotten good since the beginning of the year, and you've grown a taste for architecture too, huh? Nice job. Nice job, sis. Cecil's face flushed and he grinned. Th Thanks, Mom. Wait a second. Cecilia jabbed a finger at a particular clay model in Cecil's section. That's a penis. What? Oh, that, uh, I made that one. It's supposed to be a model of the Gherkin building from London. Cecilia nodded proudly. My god. That's a penis. She barked a laugh at Cecil's red face as he dragged his mother out of the art room. Jeez, you're a grown-ass woman. Can't you be a little more mature? It's my job to embarrass you from time to time. Or all the time. Depends on my mood. Whatever. Anyway, let's move on to the next class already. Suddenly, the nagging feeling in his stomach twisted into a knot. Cecil doubled over in pain. Sis, are you okay? This Cecil staggered onto his feet and nodded. Yeah, I don't know what came over me. Huh? The world suddenly went white. He realized he was wearing his normal clothes, too. What was going on? Cecil stumbled around frantically. Where was his mother? He couldn't see anything. He, he couldn't... Mom? Mom! Where did you go? Even he was surprised by the sheer arguing anguish in his voice as he called out into the empty white. His chest was racing with fright as he ran through the strange nothingness. He was just getting to know her. He didn't want to live without his family again. He needed to find her. I'm sick of waiting. Oh. A familiar voice suddenly echoed faintly through his empty world. Cecil turned around just in time to see a small figure running past him. Was that? Cecil's heart lurched against his chest as he slowly turned towards the direction the child was running towards. He... he remembered this. He remembered coming to this window every day, long ago. It was a place of comfort that he had forgotten about. As he approached, he could make out a familiar figure behind the glass. He remembered now. This was the place they first met. Ginny grew up in a room. It was a plain room, with dull gray walls and shelves stacked with all the books she could ever want. Every day she would make herself comfortable with the light in the window and read until the day was done. It was not as if she had anything else to do. Ginevra Corlise was a rather useless, defective girl. She wasn't allowed to leave this room. Sometimes she'd look out the window and watch the people passing through the streets. 
She'd often notice a small beggar boy, hardly older than she was, talking to anyone who would listen to him. Sometimes the grown-ups would give him some food. Sometimes they would give him some pocket change. But more often than not, they'd just ignore him. Jenny always felt a little bad for him, but there wasn't much she could do to help. She was just a useless, defective girl, after all. She wasn't allowed to leave this room. One day, she realized that she didn't have to. The window slammed open. Hey, you! Uh, flower girl! You can read, right? Teach me! The book Jenny was perusing dropped from her stunned hands. What? The little boy scowled and wiggled his little feet from his position on the windowsill. Jenny was utterly bewildered and wondered what she, what she should do. She had never spoken to anyone her age before. Um, shouldn't you ask a real teacher your parents to teach you? I'm sure they do a better job. Tiny, the boy's tiny scowl grew impatient. I don't have any. If I went to school, they'd probably send me back to the orphanage or some crap. Why can't you teach me? I see you in this window every day with your face buried in a book. You look smart enough to be a teacher. Just do it. Jenny paused for a moment and took a look at the empty room she was trapped in every day with only books for company. She sighed and shrugged. Not like I have anything better to do. All right, I'll be your teacher. The boy pumped a tiny triumphant fist in the air. Yes! Well, thanks, Teach. I promise I'll make it worth your while. Uh oh The boy's name was Sissel. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the box, but he worked harder than Jenny could have imagined someone his age could. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing. That notification bell, leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.